Hey, what is up, YouTube? This is Due Diligence here, and today we're going to talk about something. It's more like a cautionary tale on SPY and on the entire EV market. So, if you guys know that know us or being watching our video, you know that we already liquidated all our Tesla options and all our Tesla positions at around a thousand and a hundred dollars. And on one of our videos, we talked about we actually missed out on the a thousand dollar call option on profits. Um, which is a shame but at this time right now when we go back and look at a lot of the financial statements of these EV companies and you know looking at the general direction where SPY is leading towards um, you know a lot of people still think it's have a run sure why not it's gonna have a run but um, it's actually better to be safe than sorry if SPY decided to go in a downward trend beginning next week and go down to 450. Uh, why? Because taper news, the finalization of taper news should be coming out the beginning of next week. So we should be very, very cautious about um, not going really ham this Friday. And, uh, and I think people is gonna pull their position on Fridays. Also, another thing you need to worry about or we're gonna talk about today is about well, Tesla. I think Tesla's price is a little bit way too overextended I think uh, the fact that Ford actually placed, uh, uh, not Ford, Hertz actually placed uh, a, a, a huge order this month doesn't really mean that the price of uh, $1,100 will sustain, even though a lot of people or a lot of you know financial agencies giving it a uh, $1,200 rating. I think it's a little bit too overrated. I think what Elon would do, because Elon is smart, is it's gonna do a, a stock split. And for us, it's really not worth it to really hold on to a sort of a pseudo overpriced Tesla right now. We'd rather wait until it's split, wait for a couple of days and start buying some cheap options, right? Makes sense, makes sense, okay. And if you look at the general EV market, again, our Patreon portfolio and our portfolio holds a lot of on EV stocks, okay, including Fisker, including Ford, including a lot of things. And you know, it's it's been really great day today on um, you know most of them increase by like 10 percent or whatever but a lot of them are very overextended if you go look at fisker right today we almost reached to a point of 1685 which i think it's mega overextended that's why i start selling call uh selling call options today and tomorrow we're expecting it to cool down a little bit maybe have a further runner up or whatever it is but we're expecting to see a ev correction by the end of next week and if we know that there's gonna be an EV correction, that I mean, lithium is about to be corrected too. And I don't think a lot of investors are realizing what is really the bottleneck of lithium production, which we might or might not post a video out because we're in the process of getting into the lithium trade ourselves. And Ford again, we hold some very short term options and we sold out today at about $17 made about like a 80% profit on a day and we made another 160% profit on two other contracts. It's great that we make some of our money that we lost on Facebook back. But again, um, right now as a channel as a whole and as a Patreon group as a whole or a YouTube channel as a whole, we wanna make more consistent profit than before. Um, but this, the whole purpose of this, this video is telling you guys that, hey guys, maybe it's, a, it's, it's, it's time to cool off on EV and invest more of, more, more of the portfolio onto stuff like, you know, bank stocks, right? Because, because taper news is just around the corner and we see a lot of intricate block trades going on with JPM and with, um, you see Wells Fargo, regional banks, a lot of things. And we speculate that in the next month, regional banks and general just investment banks, not really investment banks, just uh, general uh, loan approving banks and have a run if taper news were confirmed next week. This is for this video. Hope you guys love it. And again, we're not financial advisors. We do not give financial advices.